you're wondering where the handbags come from, that's your belly. Back in the day, each square centimetre of belly skin was 50 bucks in. He's got a lot. You count each one 50 bucks, a lot of money you've made. Um, they've also got ears. So behind his eyes, you'll see there's little holes behind. That's his ears. Crocodiles also do yawn. It is quite funny. You sit there, they open their mouth and then they're done. Crocodiles also do drink water. You don't see it, but they do actually drink water. And um, eyes colour the kids as well. Crocodiles also do fart. It does happen as well, and it's quite funny that it's talking about. That differs as well. Do you have a nice one over there? You can come up here. That size, he'll run away. Um, they've gone up. So something big fell in there, which in the past the birds fallen in there. Twenty. Something. You can go in here, hold it, you It was in time last. No, no, no. So, yeah, crocs are killed, and they can't just stay in the league. We're not going to kill that crocs around here, mate. It's just busted. We've got crocs. If you do good condition, they'll do it for very quiet. There you go, you're going to go for that. We're not going to kill that crocs around here, mate. Of course, mate, the whole crocs.
Hey, you find it school? Have a go. He's pointing out. I mean, he's a little crack pain in there. He's a little bit dirty in there.
particularly from the Hunterdoo Barra Farm, which is next to the Adelaide River, and that's a roughly an hour's drive from here. Quite commonly, they get a lot of saltwater crocodiles at about 1.5 to 2 metres. Um, they catch them on the property and they call us in, and we get to lease the crocs in this lagoon. If they're too big in here, uh, we send them on a man made river, and that's why there's over 50 crocs in that river system. Uh, for our tour guys, if you've got any questions about the crocs or the park itself, um, please don't be afraid to ask. There's no such thing as a silly question, um, only silly answers on my behalf. I do my best um, what's in you guys today. Uh, Crocodiles Park was established back in 1994 um, by a man called Dr. Graham Webb. Now, Graham Webb is the godfather of saltwater crocodiles. Um, he's got over 40 years of research behind his belt alone, along with his um, best mate and his assistant, um, Charlie Manoli. Charlie Can you stay there for a second? Ah. Thanks. Yeah, this croc at the front's learnt that um, if we stick our hands over, it's an extra piece of snack for him. So every tool, we've got to watch our hands when we stick anything over. So we are, today we are a small uh, research centre, and we are still learning about saltwater crocodiles and the conservation in their lives. Um, we also do have a small zoological area behind us um, with a lot of unique animals. Um, throughout the entire Northern Territory, um, if you've ever been to the other wildlife parks or the other zoos around Darwin, such as the Territory Wildlife Park, or in the city, um, Crocosaurus Cove, they have got all native Australian wildlife. Um, here in our park, we've got exotic wildlife. So we've got a green anaconda, we've got lions and ostriches from Africa, we've even got a capybara. Did you not know that? you got a capybara. Um, we've also got... Um, a scarlet macaw, which is a very endangered bird species. And what else? I'm missing other things as well. So yes, we're the only zoo in the Northern Territory that has exotic wildlife. Croc Cove in the city and Territory Wildlife Park um, in Berry Springs area, um, they've only got only the local animals from Australia. Do you mind? That's how they communicate. Sounds like a really disgusting burp. So that's personal space. So sometimes they get too close, they'll let each other know. So that crocodile's there, he's just telling that one, all right, I don't mean any trouble. I'm just lifting my head up to see what you're doing. So lifting their heads up is telling them, I don't want to muck with you, I'm just, just watching you. When they puff their backs up in the water, it's intimidation, it's showing how big he is to the other crocs, and they normally keep their distance. They do fight quite often. They are mostly males in here, so sometimes during these tours or at the end of the day, um, they'll be clashing over personal space or for the food on the zip line. Not all the crocs will get the food on the zip line. Sometimes we have to feed them um, every Monday and Thursday, roughly 60 kilos of chicken, and we, we try to spread it out as best we can by lobbing it over the banks or over the fencing. Um, as soon as you have the crate, they all come at you, and you've got to be quick because they will fight over something that weighs up to a kilo. So we also, a long time ago, back in the early 90s, used to be a sustainable crocodile farm. Oh, it is profitable. They put them to the side and they put them in a very small pond to keep them to pres There's no food, guys. Um, to preserve them to the size they need them. And then, um, yes, the crocodile is put down, but that's how most farming of any animal product is done because you can't skin the leather off the crocodile, it's impossible. Um, but also, even butchers as well, they've got to be very careful when they cut the skin off the crocs as well, because if they go off a centimetre off, um, they could get in big trouble. So it's a very delicate operation. Um, most of the steps are done in the Northern Territory, um, but there are a few steps the Northern Territory government and the Australian government does not allow to be permitted here in our borders. So it gets sent overseas and they do the final fencing touches. Assistant, um, Charlie, Mon Charlie Manoli, can you stay there for a second? Ah. Thanks. Yeah, this crock at the front's learned that um, if we stick our hands over, it's an extra piece of snack for it.
also crock burgers as well. Um, but it's a very long process. Roughly, it's a one in five, there's no food, mate. There's a one in five chance that a crocodile at this sort of size is going to be turned into a handbag. It takes more than one croc, roughly, to be turned into one said product. Um, the whole croc is used. Anything they don't use is your lungs, your organs, or your testicles from the animal, because no one's going to buy that. Um, and also the size of the crocodile determines the price as well. So normally when you're making handbags, they get them at 1.5 to 1.8, um, roughly that takes about four to five years, maybe six. Um, just like humans, everyone grows differently. So genetics can be passed down to generation, generation. Little scuffle right there. So when the crocodile reaches a certain size, they'll catch them and check them out. If the croc's busted up, they can't use it. It's not gonna be profitable. They might use it for other things, but the main thing they want is the belly skin. It's the most expensive leather on the planet. Hence, do you want to make 10 bucks? He dropped his food. Yeah? So I want to chuck you over the fence, and it's under his back until you go bankrupt. Right, so what we're going to do now, because these guys have had enough, is we're going to feed mum and dad. Now, I have said to some people already, but if you would like today, you can feed a crocodile. By all means, ask me. Don't be afraid. Um, just a few safety. Don't stick your hands through the fencing. Uh, just because when the crocodiles jump up, particularly the big males, I out of date. And um, also, your personal belongings, such as your hat, sunnies, cameras, water bottles, if they fall in the water, I can tell you right now, and I have seen it happen in front of my eyes, it's gone. Um, if you lose it, don't expect me to save it. I might attempt to save it, but anything that goes into the water, the crocodile will kill it. Um, also, your mobile phones today, if you lose them today, tough luck, guys. Uh, people have lost the latest iPhone in these crock pans. It's very funny because it normally would be a 15 year old child. They go, oh, look at this guy, and they drop it in the water. They cry, they beg me to go in, and I say, get stuffed. Um, but like I said, if you want to feed a croc, by all means, ask me. Um, the first croc we're going to see, um, his name is Peg Leg Jack. Um, he's got that name because his front left toes are missing from a fight um, years and years ago and he cut off the circulation and his body naturally healed up from that injury. So when the vet comes while well, living here, crocodiles don't do a whole lot of activities. Um, other people say otherwise, but in our pens, they sit there and they will watch everything around them. So when you guys casually walk up and down this platform, in actual fact, peg leg and all the other big blokes are sitting there watching you. Because some people like to go to crocs and go, oi, do something. And they jump at you and you freak out. So they're constantly observing what they're doing. Dumb. When it comes to feeding time, they do a lot of, they do move around. So he's got more energy built up than he would. We do clean them. It is terrifying, I'll tell you for a fact. And that's when the crocodile really gets switched on, is he goes, all right, there's something in my pen that's actually worth to kill. Now these crocs have killed humans. Um, however, they were problematic with naughty crocodiles in populated areas. Um, also mainly killing livestock and also killing people's pets. But they have never, ever tasted or killed any humans. Although in captivity with peg leg, pretty close. Like I say, once a month we do go in and we know he's warm. It is true for a plane actually. And sometimes those black panels or those black tarp on the fencing, as you can see, gets covered in bird poo. Yeah, every so often we've got a gurney all that off and he likes to kill the gurney. That's a hard mm. thing to do. So how we do that is we drain the water, so he sits at the bottom, it's about a metre and a half in depth. That gives us enough time to react while we just get the machine out or to put pressure on him. So what we use is these wooden paddles and we just constantly repeat tapping on the crocodile. We don't go full pelt uh, because one, you'll hurt the crocodile, plus you wouldn't want to snap in half like it's too bad. It's too thick. So we give him repeated taps and put the pressure on him to back off. Same as the females, you can repeatedly tap. It doesn't always work though, but it's your best option to do. And please don't think I'm teasing him, but like I did say, I'm exercising him. He's also using his brain every time. He's doing pretty good. Um, who would like to attempt to beat him? Yeah, I got legs well. Yep. Yeah, you can climb it right after that. Mm -hmm. Alright, so two hands down here. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you're last in the water. Your job's easy. All you're going to do now is just lift it once. And yeah, that's it. We'll give him one more jump and then we'll give him that food. Yeah, so they also 
they do build up the lactic acid in their bodies and too much movement, um, so pretty soon he'll start to get tired. So uh, hopefully he's going to be sensible and he's going to get this food now. Cats, so do crocodiles, so they cough up all that string into a big furball chunk and it floats in the water, it smells disgusting. And sometimes I've seen these crocodiles eat them again. So this now become a breeding program, so there's another, there's another croc here, this is the female. Females typically grow to 3 metres roughly, uh, but they can get to 3.5. They'll never get any bigger than that. If they did, that's a male crocodile you can have. So all their growth is reproduction and the females lay once a year. Between November and March, that's when their breeding season takes place, um, but the mating takes place roughly June, July. She does have a husband, um, but he hasn't uh, matured yet, so he's still growing over time. And there was a study done in the last 10 years that Indonesia alone, over 700 plus people were killed by assault. So the numbers started to bounce up quite quickly because back in those days, all the big ones were wiped out. So it was all the small little ones, so they were growing up quite quickly. In the early days of crocodile research in the 70s and 80s, uh, the biggest one they ever pulled out was roughly um, a 5.1. His name was Sweetheart, um, captured in 1979, uh, but he was actually stuck under a log and he did drown, um, also uh, used some drugs as well. Uh, but the average size for a saltwater crocodile for research was about 3 metres. Now these days, the average size is 4.5 to 4.8, so it has increased. That popping sound, that's never the teeth touching, that's all the air coming out. If it was, his jaws would explode on impact, so that's all the air expelling out. It's like popping a balloon, that's the air coming out. He's got 3,000 pounds per square inch of jaw pressure, it's the strongest bite force in the animal kingdom. Sometimes they actually chew silently, otherwise they do all that weird good stuff. Um, unfortunately folks, that does conclude the feeding. I hope you guys enjoyed that. For those that have booked for the one o'clock boat cruise, you'll be picking on your day guys. Half a minute, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And at the end of the day, it's your opinion on the crocodile farming and the um, crocodile harvesting these days. Because if it wasn't for crocodile farming, um, they'd be extinct back in the 60s. Simple as that. Half a guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If not, um, write a complaint, they'll kick me out.